Um, before we get started with today's press conference, I'm going to kick it over to Lindsey Jones, president of the PFWA and NFL senior writer for The Athletic. Hi, Kevin. Um, I will keep this short because I know there is nothing you hate talking more about right now than 2020. But on behalf of the Pro Football Writers of America, we wanted to formally present you with our 2020 Coach of the Year Award. Um, this was voted on at the end of last season, so I don't think this is any surprise to anybody. But uh, Peter should have the actual trophy to pass. There you go. So there we go. There's the official, the official coach of the year trophy. Um, so this is voted on by our members across the country. And, you know, we just wanted to say congratulations and how much we enjoyed um, watching you and covering you. And uh, we're really looking forward to what's to come in 2021. Well, I appreciate that, Lindsay. Uh, as you know, uh, I don't want to talk about 2020, but in this instance, it gives me an opportunity to talk about our players and our coaches. And uh, as, as everybody knows, I thought they did an outstanding job last year in tough circumstances and, and they never blinked. So they, uh, they made me look good, but I, I appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the recognition for our staff and for our players. Uh, with that, I'll just kind of dive into today. I thought it was really good work out there. I mean, absolutely be beautiful day on the fields here in Berea. Got a lot of really good work in. Uh, the individual drills, the seven on seven, the team periods, I just thought we covered a lot of ground. We, we ran a lot of plays ton of communication is going on out there and I was really pleased with uh, the work that we got done. So we got another one tomorrow and then one more on Thursday. And with that, I will take any questions. Thank you very much, Coach. The first one will be from Jake Trotter. Yeah, hey, Kevin, uh, congratulations. Uh, how did Odell look out there to you today? Yeah, it looked good to me. Uh, did some individual drills, did routes on air. Uh, you know, he, he's still progressing through. Uh, I think he's seven or eight months post-surgery, uh, ACL surgery, and he looks a lot different than I did uh, seven or eight months post-ACL. Uh, so I think it was just the doctor he had. Um, he looks pretty good to me. How do you feel in terms of you know him being ready to go uh, for training camp at this point? Yeah, I think we'll see. He, he looked good today. They won a mini camp, and then we'll, we'll progress and, and make sure that we're having, obviously, dialogue with, with the player, with the training staff, the medical staff, et cetera. Thanks, Jake. Next is Nate Ulrich. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, new phone, getting used to it. Um, Miles Garrett at the end there. I think did O line, D line do like a was that a conditioning test? And then at the at the end, uh, Miles got stretched out and. He did not, um, you know, do your final 11 on 11 walking a little early. Is, he, is everything okay with him? Yeah, he was excused. And no, that's not a test. That's just when you're working so much seven on seven, you know, this is a passing camp. The way the rules are set up, it's for the passing game. So while we're doing seven on seven, the O-line and D-line were doing some striders, but uh, in no way uh, a test. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Next, we'll go to Jeff Shadell. Hey, Kevin, uh, we were talking to, to Nick Chubb earlier, and we were asked about him and Kareem working together more this season. What can be – did you guys talk about that in your coaches' meetings in the offseason, and how could that work out? We talk about a lot of things in those meetings, Jeff. And, uh, yeah, we want to obviously do different things uh, throughout the course of the season and give the defense different looks. Could be two running backs, could be three running backs. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you, Jeff. Tony Grossi, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, just to clarify something in my mind, um, in, in my history, if a player is practicing in mini camp, it usually means he's been cleared for training camp unless something would happen in between. Uh, am I wrong with that? Like the, the idea of starting somebody on PUP who's already been practicing doesn't apply, does it? Yeah, Tony, honestly, I, I don't know the particulars uh, of that rule. Uh, I'm just not sure. Okay. Thank Thanks, Tony. Thanks, we'll go back to Jake Trotter. Yeah, hey, Kevin, we talked, uh, you know, earlier on this offseason about Baker in a second offseason in your system, um, virtually the same teammates offensively. Um, you have, you know, uh, big expectations for him um, in terms of building off what he did last year. Um, 
now that you've been with him in person, uh, could you comment on just his understanding of the offense, um, of the schemes you guys run compared to say, you know, this time last year when it was all still relatively new? Well, I'd tell you, Jake, yes, this is the first time I'm, I'm in person with him, but we've been on a lot of Zoom calls together. So throughout the course of this offseason program, going all the way back to April, we've installed the offense, we've watched tape together, we've added new plays, talked about old plays. So uh, we have a pretty good feel for where Baker is, really where the uh, bunch of the guys that are returning are. So uh, we have work, we have room to grow, we have work to do. And that was, this was a step uh, today was a step in that direction. Thank you, Jake. Zach Jackson, go ahead. Hi, Kevin. Um, you know, maybe it's operationally or maybe it's something you feel better about, but is there a specific example of something that's better this time around just because you have had an off season and because not everything is new and you guys are all distant from a year ago? Yeah, I would tell you the first thing that comes to mind is the cadence. And it's really hard to practice that on Zoom. So that was something we, we really didn't practice per se uh, till July of last year. So uh, obviously with the offense in year two, we're able to do things, uh, different cadences, whether it be first, second or third down, fourth down for that matter, uh, that we're, we're ahead of where we were last year. But there's going to be people in the stands this season, God willing. Uh, so that means that the silent count and some of those different things you have to do are, are definitely going to show up uh, this year where they did not last year. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Scott Petrick has our next question. Hey, Kevin. That was the first time we saw Jadavian and Tack um, kind of on the field in general, and then joining Miles and Malik. Just what goes through your head when you look over and you see those bodies across your defensive line? Yeah, Scott, I just I enjoyed seeing 90 guys out there. Uh, you know, good to be around the players, good for the players to be around each other. So. I think we got a lot done just uh, in terms of team building and, and strengthening relationships, meeting new players. I mean, you mentioned Jadavion and Tack. You know, they were meeting some guys for the first time today. Uh, so I thought it was really good for those guys to be around each other, uh, but particularly the defensive line. I mean, I think it's it's a competitive group. They, they, Coach Kiff and Coach Garrett push them. And I think you see in their individual drills, they're having fun. Uh, it's it's a, a high energy group. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Nate Ulrich, back to you. Hey, Kevin, I know your virtual meetings with players began back on April 19th. And I'm just wondering for, you know, most of the starting offense wasn't at the OTAs. You know, we know they're voluntary and everything. But just do you think that you're able to see everything you've been going over with, with guys in, in those virtual meetings? Do you see it translate to the field today? Or is it like, well, we got to kind of, you know, you know, go over things or, or review things again? Because it is different, right, when you're sitting on Zoom and then when you're actually going through it on the field. Are you seeing the – are you seeing it translate to the field well or is it just is, – is there is it like a work in progress? It's definitely a work in progress like everything and like all of us. Uh, we definitely can get better. Uh, I, I think the guys on the offense we're talking have, have a, a strong understanding of what we're doing. We ran some things today that, that were from install one, ran some things today that were from install seven. Uh, it really ran the gamut, just wanted to get some things live and get the quarterbacks a feel for it, get the receivers, et cetera. Um, so there, there is an element of making sure that we get live reps of some things right now and see if we want to continue to do them and see if there are things that we want to try in training camp uh, as we move forward. And just a, one quick other thing, um, didn't see Callie out there um do you have an update on the length of the suspension like do you, will she be back by training camp do you have any news for us that way she'll be back uh for training camp but i'm not going to get into the spe specifics uh right now Nate. thanks kevin thanks Nate. mary Kay cabot you're up uh, yeah, if, if Odell isn't going to be doing much uh, during this mini camp, have you been able to catch a glimpse of some of the things that, uh, you know, that he's showing on social media, some of the posts of just how fast he's running and cutting and making one handed grabs? And if so, how exciting is it for you to see how far along he is after only six and a half months? Yeah, uh, if you can believe it, Mary Kay, I haven't seen what he's doing on social media, but saw it in person and that, that was better. So he's moving around. Uh, again, went through individual, went routes on air, looked good to me. Okay, thanks.
Thank you, Mary Kay. Marla Reiner has her next question. Uh, hi, I hope you haven't answered this. I had some technical difficulties. Um, just the pace of the mini camp and everything seems so different. Is this the new way of the world, you think? Just, you know, it just doesn't seem like the days we, you know, when you were coming into the league. No, you're, you're right, Marla. I, I think we're trying to be real smart about our pace, particularly when we're in team periods. I think that the days of going full speed and, and those periods, uh, it just, it doesn't make sense. And there's injuries, uh, data to, to back that up and, and just thinking about helmets and shoulders and the guys aren't wearing shoulder pads, so it's hard to protect themselves. So we, we feel like we can go full speed in individual to work on our technique. We can go full speed on seven on seven and take care of each other for, and, and you know stay away from collisions. And then when we get to those team drills, we're really putting an emphasis on alignment, assignment, communication, and then we're just going to slow it down post-snap. I'm not saying I'm disagreeing. I think as I agree with you, it's the right thing. But is this going to take some getting used to just for, you know, people like you have been in the league for 15 years? Yeah, I think you just got to be able to adapt, Marla. And I think that the players and coaches did a nice job today. Uh, you know, we're going to get back to training camp. And, and early on, we're only going to be in helmets. And then the pads will come on and we'll start to progress uh, in the, into what looks like a normal team drill. But I just think that's part of, of us taking in all, all the information and making sure we get really, really good work in uh, without exposing any of the guys to undue injury. 